Hmm, it's missing something. Maybe another leaf? One eternity later. <laughs> it's you again. Welcome back. In this week's Hawaiian episode of YouTube Art School, I'll tell you exactly how to get faster at drawing. As in finishing a painting or a drawing in four hours instead of 400. Like how to seriously speed up your work. There's a trick to it and it's pretty easy when you know how to go about it. Curious? <laughs> well, quickly, let's get this class started. All right, class is in session. Pay attention. To draw faster, your perspective first needs to change. It's not so much how you can get faster, but rather how you can avoid wasting time. It might sound like it's the same thing, but it's kind of like trying to make more money versus trying to spend what you already have more wisely. Making what you already have go further. That's what we're going for here. See the difference? I'm going to show you three things that you should start doing right now to draw as fast as me here. Just kidding. Of course, this is fast forwarded. But yeah, while we can't easily focus on the speed itself, short of, you know, just getting better at art, generally speaking, like developing a better grasp of the art fundamentals, which takes years, there's certainly a lot of things that you can do to avoid wasting time and as a result, shorten the time it'll take you to finish your pieces. Starting now. Here's the first one. And it's something that I've been doing for this one particular artwork that I'm working on right now. And well, that would be to not zoom in. Resist the temptation. The biggest waste of time that most artists tend to be guilty of is over detailing. Spending a lot of time on smaller details that don't contribute to the final result much at all. I'm sure everybody watching has been guilty of this at some point in time, maybe often, maybe all the time. As you can see with this particular drawing though, I'm making a conscious effort to avoid zooming in on details and potentially wasting time down the line. This isn't just a problem for amateur artists either. I've seen many professionals. Hell, I might even catch myself sometimes zooming in, maybe working on like the face of one of my characters and detailing it real good, only to zoom out and realize that the actual size that people will see this at will be about like five to six pixels wide and that the details are just not visible at all at the size that it'll be displayed at. So avoid zooming in or alternatively, using a bigger brush than you would normally use kind of does the same thing. It's a way to offset the fact that you're zooming in. By using a bigger brush, you make it harder for yourself to dump a ton of precious time on things that most people will likely not notice. That's the whole point of this. This is a massive problem with artists and just fixing that in your workflow should make you about twice as fast. Maybe. Of course, this point is way more relevant at the beginning of a project where you still have a lot of unknowns and you're still trying to figure things out. You know, as your idea and concepts get more fleshed out, you can start to relax and zoom, you know, whatever you need to do to wrap up your piece. So then, what's a good size to start working at, you ask? Well, usually I'll recommend the size that it will be displayed at. I find that's a pretty good starting point. Like if you were drawing traditionally, you know, like you can't zoom in. Do that basically when you work digitally. Like for example, if you only post your art on Instagram or Twitter, well, it'll be displayed pretty small. So that's the size that you would start working at. Trying your best to not zoom in. Hold off on that as much as possible or use a larger brush at the beginning until you're about 50% done with the full image. After which, you know, you can ignore this and start zooming in or using smaller brushes. And by the way, this applies to pretty much any kind of art like drawing, painting and sculpting. The same logic always applies. Simply amazing. But even more amazing is the fact that we've now reached over 18,000 students as part of the art school program for digital artists. Mm -mm -mm. I have a huge summer sale going on until the end of this month to celebrate the milestone. So check the link in the video description to learn all about it. Read the reviews and shoot me questions if you have any. It's a complete art education equivalent to what you would find in a four-year university program, but arguably better and more relevant for a tiny, tiny fraction of the price. Check it out and join our awesome Discord community this summer. All right, plug over. Now, the next point has to do with the levels of detail. If you're a student of mine, you've probably heard this millions of times, but the idea is too powerful to not also share here on YouTube. Basically, you'll want to break up anything that you're working on, whether it be just line art, shading, colors, whatever it is, in three different steps big details, medium-sized details, 
and smaller details. And of course, this ties in pretty closely with the previous point, but the whole idea here is that you set yourself up so that your workflow has a bunch of checkpoints, in a sense, like a video game almost. You don't move in to medium-sized details until you're done with your big details. And then similarly, you don't move on to smaller details until you're done with your medium-sized details. So for example, in this case, when it comes to shading, well, I would be shading all the bigger pieces first, thinking of the whole as a silhouette almost. And then moving on to medium-sized details, these would be kind of all the bigger muscles, like the details in the shoulders, shading around the ribs, different sections of the limbs, those kinds of medium chunks. And then finally, once that's done, then I can focus on the smaller details, things like the face, the skin folds, the hair details, seams in the clothes, etc., etc. But like I said, this works with any particular step that you're at. By adopting this process and kind of narrowing down the scope of your focus at any given time, as you progress, it makes it really, really hard to go down a rabbit hole and waste a bunch of time on something that you might have to redo later. And that's great. This one is not only really, really good to help yourself save time, but it's something that you should always consider when approaching absolutely anything in art. You'll see you'll progress a lot faster if you always break down your projects into three parts, bigger details, medium-sized details, and the smaller details. Do it! I believe in you. And we're down to the final point here, and this is going to be the most important out of the bunch. So good for you if you made it this far. You're not a loser. The final point to make your art faster is to work mostly on things that you're familiar with, and only a few little things, a few little skills that you're not really good at yet. In other words, stay in your comfort zone. Why? Well, it's pretty simple. You're slow at things that you suck at. Let's say you're trying to start a new painting and your fundamentals are hypothetically, you know, mediocre at best. And let's say you decide to tackle a really challenging painting, which includes things like a lot of sketching, a lot of difficult perspective, a couple of characters, some intricate light setup with multiple lights, detailed shading, a lot of storytelling, and of course, having it look very polished and rendered. Well, Unless all of those skills are skills that you already spent a lot of time developing at a high level, it'll probably take you literally forever to finish, and then you probably won't even like the results. Worst, you probably won't even know why, and you'll invest even more time trying to fix something that requires capabilities that you don't have yet. Instead, stay in your comfort zone, for the most part at least. Try maybe a few new things, but keep most of the challenge at a level that you're already proven to yourself that you can deliver. Don't overwhelm yourself. This is something that I repeat to students all the time. I know it's tempting to try and see what you can do, you know, to challenge yourself, but take it one step at a time, not all at once. Now, of course, I know some people in the comments are gonna say, well, what if I suck at everything? You don't suck at everything, bro. There's for sure something that you're better at. And well, just make sure that you always include that skill when working on something new. If you're pretty good at anatomy, for example, but you suck at perspective, well, don't go and start working on environments without any characters or, you know, without any anatomy. That's just jumping in a situation where everything is foreign to you and everything is going to be a struggle. Let's actually see what that would look like if we were RPG characters. So let's say you're this hypothetical artist and here are your skills. Of course, there are many more skills when it comes to just arts and art fundamentals, but let's say those are the only six that we're observing here in this context, anatomy, perspective, storytelling, values, design, and color. As you can see here, you might not be too bad at anatomy, but mostly bad at the rest, except maybe Maybe storytelling. If you were trying to pick a project, something that you don't want to take too long, is this going to be the project for you? Hmm, in this case, a project that requires pretty much all of your skills to be quite high. If we overlap what you got and what's required to complete this project, there's a lot missing here. And the light blue here is what you'll have to compensate for in extra time because you like the skills. It represents struggle. But what about a project like this, right? In this case, the project that you would tackle doesn't require any kind of knowledge of values, design, or color, mostly anatomy and perspective. The perspective part is meant to be a little bit of a challenge because yours is not quite up to par, but if we do the same thing here and overlap again our two little graphs, well, just a little bit of blue, but not too much, right? Again, if the blue represents struggle, well, that's very little of it. Project like this will take you way less time. It matches your abilities much more closely. Pretty dang straightforward, but if you work this way, not only is the whole process going to be much faster, but while you won't be focusing on anatomy too much, since you know that skill is already pretty good, all your attention is going to be on perspective. 
hypothetically, if that's the other skill that's not as good. In this particular scenario, you would have your full undivided attention on the perspective skill. And I would tend to guess that you're going to level up that skill much faster if you focus all of your attention on it, instead of diluting it between all the other skills like we saw with the first project. So not only is your painting or drawing going to be completed faster, but the one skill that's not really up to par is going to be leveled up much faster as a result. Rinse and repeat with different skills and profit. In general, aim to target one new skill and keep everything else well within your comfort zone. And there we have it, the three things that you need to do to speed up your art. And well, I hope that was helpful. If you haven't already, you can go ahead and check the link in the video description to grab one of my two custom brush packs for absolutely free, which includes most of the brushes that I use today. And well, be sure to have the notification bell enabled to not be late for next week's class, this time live from Japan. Oh, and I almost forgot. <laughs>